Hi, and um, this is my commentary to accompany uh, lecture number six in sustainability modeling. Um, and in this lecture, we cover um, uh, human nature interactions. And these are models that involve population um, and a resource that limits population growth. Um, and um, the idea is to understand how uh, you can actually build an interaction between a population that has its growth dynamics as we've looked before and a resource that is limiting the population growth and in the process is getting consumed uh, so the resource is getting depleted um, so there is this uh, interaction loop um, that is interesting and we're going to be looking at it through uh, three case studies the first one um, has to do with a well-documented uh, ecology case of uh, deer population in the Kaibab Plateau in northern Arizona um, and in this case, uh, it's interesting how the deer population interacts um, with, um, with nature primarily for food consumption purposes um, and how um, that, uh, you know, generates some scenarios of where, you know, in, in one case, uh, the population of deer overshoots and it, it, it goes too high. And uh, we look at, for example, how interventions, human interventions, uh, like trying to limit the maximum population of deer um, that is supposed to be there, how that affects uh, you know, that, that process and that feedback. Uh, so we're going to be looking at that. And um, The second case study is, uh, is a fascinating um, one because it's one of these enigmas that has plagued human history for centuries. And it's just, it, is, it relates to the demise of the Mayan population over a thousand years ago. And uh, at that time, the Mayan population was a thriving group. I had was very advanced. It has it had pretty, you know, sophisticated arrangements, social organization, and and um, t technological advancements. Um, and the Mayans got um, um, really demi you know pummeled uh, over a matter of decades, and uh, the population went down dramatically. Over probably about a million people or more actually. Um, died over a very short period of time. It's one of these things that it's been studied, that there's, it's, it's, uh, it's well documented. You can look at lots of readings or some readings that are included in, in this lecture related to that case. And um, I want you to take a look at it because we built a, a simple system dynamics model sort of trying to explain or provide some potential explanations for why this has happened. This hasn't been resolved by any means, even though there were several hypotheses out there available. Uh, the third uh, model that we look at um, uh, is a generalized uh, population nature interaction model uh, that we're going to be using to build further complexity, uh, you know, for the class. Um, you know, adding as we progress, adding you know more to sort of the same skeleton of model. So I want you to look at that one individually as well. Um, now, in terms of um, you know, in terms of the class and where we're moving, um, we're going to start m focusing more effort now on building your individual uh, term projects, you know, the models that you're going to be using for your term paper and your final exam presentation. Um, and uh, so at this point, what I expect you to be at is to have some familiarity with the modeling interface. Uh, and uh, you know uh, how the models are structured, how you know the equations that are used, and, and how to structure that's the units, uh, um, how to introduce uh, you know um, a new stock or a new flux or a new interaction, a new loop, um, and you do that by by you know tinkering really with the models that that we have been showing in the class, and also by uh, start building your model little by little. So I don't expect you to, um, you know, go out there and, um, you know, and, and start building a five stock model with multiple flux exact all at once. So start simple. Start with a single stock, single flux, and then start building complexity slowly, you know, um, you know, and, and progressively. And trying to understand what each step of the model development process does to your model, how the model output changes. This is going to build some insight um, in, 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 in your intuition. It's going to, it's going to get sharp, you know, sharper um, in terms of the model development process. And that's exactly the type of skill that we want to build in this class. Um, 
So I'm going to be working with you every step of the way, uh, and we're going to start start kicking it off by looking at you know want to understand what you what model you want to build, what are your stocks, what are your flux, and sort of go through that step by step process that we outlined a few lectures back. Um, so we're going to be working on that in, in, in terms of um, in terms of the how the class progresses. We're going to be looking at models of, of increasing complexity for you to pick up additional tips and tricks. Uh, but we're going to be focusing a larger effort now on your individual model development. So I want to I want to see some some of the ideas and um, and uh, see how that um, evolves into your full fledged model for your class project. So um, keep um, you know keep the discussions coming. You know if you run into trouble when developing your model, if you find a question while the existing models post on the discussion page. Um, it's a good, very good, useful way to generate some some interaction between the group, um, and uh, keep up the readings, uh, keep posting materials. Uh, each individual uh, case that we see in this lecture has its own video in the class folder, so everything should be all set. Um, so enjoy the lecture, enjoy the week, and I'll see you later. <laughs>